going on with now is we're going to tie a version of my simple sedge and we're going to use the caddis wings here. Um, the hook I'm using is a size 12 B400. Isn't it funny you can't pick up one hook without picking up lots of them? Never mind. Put that in there like that. Jolly good. Um, I've got a nice bit of thread here. This, um, this is dark olive thread and it, um, it comes from funky fly tying. I know. And it's 10-0, which means it's very, very fine indeed. A grumpy old fly tires will tell you that if you need to split it, you can't. Well, you can, and I'll show you later. Uh, and you wind this all the way down the body with a bit of speed, a little bit round the bend, rather like myself. There we are. <laughs> oh dear. And then you snip off the waist. And for the body, for the main body, we're going to use ostrich hurl. That's this stuff. Okay. Um, I use the Vineyard version of that. Here it is. Ostrich Hurl. You know, it's a bit out of fashion at the moment, Ostrich Hurl, but I use it a lot. It's probably because I'm a bit out of fashion, I don't know. <laughs> oh yes, everybody's nodding and saying, yeah, right. Uh, tie it in at the back. Come up the body like this, tying it down as you go. Come back down and make sure you're going to start this a little bit round the bend like that. Okay, to the front. Be sure to leave enough room at the front of the hook to put in your CDC support for the wings. That'll be three CDC feathers and for the wing itself and enough room at the front to put in a black CDC hackle. So I suppose that's three or four mils, something like that, but you'll be able to judge it. Okay, now we wind the ostrich hurl forward with as much speed as possible if you wouldn't mind, Ian. Thank you. There you have it, an ostrich hurl hackle. I like it. I have to say, I like it a lot. There we are. Snip off the waist. If only I could snip mine off, right, yes. Oops, there we are. Now, as I said before, you need to take two um, CDC feathers, light olive. I've used the, uh, once again, the Vineyard product. I like them a lot. Nice variation in the packet. Um, and I prepared some here, two or three, about the length of the body, like that. Hold them, give them a quick pinch and loop. One, two, have a look, make sure they're sitting nicely. Yes, they are. That will support the wing very well and snip off the waist. I've used three there. I think it's just about right. There we are. Um, tie down the tag ends. And now the exciting part. We take some of the, uh, the prepared caddis wings here and you simply ease them off the backing like that. Well, fold them in half like that. Then carefully slide them down the fly like this. Ooh, that's about right. And one turn just to position them. That's good. And tighten up, tighten up, tighten up. Make sure they're nice and tight. Okay. Yep, that does it. The wing is supported. The hackle's looking good. Now it is time to take some black CDC. Um, I use lots of um, different CDCs. This one's from Cooks Hill Fly Tying, uh, which of course is Steve Cooper, who organises the British Fly Fair. And if you've never been to the British Fly Fair, you're really missing something. We're now in 2013, and uh, in February 2014, it's going to be the same place as Stafford. Have a look on the website, British Fly Fair. Really worth going to. Um, <clears throat> Those of you who've seen me fold feathers before, I've got this little device I do it with, but in the interest of fairness, today I'm going to use Marc Petitjean's magic tool. And let's face it, he was the first guy to uh, really make it popular. Yeah, so, uh, and Ian, you'll have to come round and look after my, over my shoulder, mate, uh, to see this. I need a black CDC feather, which I've got one here. And what I do is I just preen the fibers out like that, okay? And I push it into the block, voila. We cut off each end of the feather, one, two, 
take hold of the fibers in the wonderful clip and take it out. You take your long scissors here and you cut off the stem carefully. And that is what we're going to put into the split thread, those fibers. Right. Now, they say you can't split um, fine thread. Fine thread or fine thread? I don't know. I, say, um, I must get these teeth sorted. I'm breaking them in for a friend, actually. Fine thread. They say you can't split it. Well, you can. And here's a trick uh, that was shown to me by Steve Thornton many, many years ago. And what he said, what you do is you spread the thread once it's flat. You spread it over your fingernail like that and taking your um, sewing machine needle, you just push it into the thread like that. So it can be done. Yes, it can be done. Then taking your fibers, pop them in, close the thread and there you are ready to spin the bobbin. Oh, I know, terribly exciting, isn't it? Here we go, spinning it away from the vise, waiting for it to start turning, which is a very exciting bit. I hope, yes, there we are, look at that. Now, is that or is that not a perfect hackle to wind on? Of course it is, yes. Bring the bobbin up and start to wind. But when you get to the black CDC, remember that you have to hold the fibers back as we go. So hold them back, hold them back, hold them back, hold them back. Whoops. Like that, like that. Lastly, make absolutely sure as you stick the, the hook into your thumb that you've got it absolutely right. You may have to remove a few fibers at the front, but that, if I may say so, is looking good. Now, you'll have seen me do this before, but I don't mind doing it again. I'm not going to use a whip finish tool or my fingers. I'm going to use a half hitch tool and we're going to put three half hitches on the front. One, two, three, which is a whip finish. And you like it so much, you give it one more whip finish like that on there. Oh, done. Lovely. Snip the thread. All you need then is a little dab of varnish and you're done. Now, if you'd like to see a lot more flies, a lot more fun, and a lot more of my stuff, go to my website. It's at www.chrissanford.com.